welcome to the Inside the Hem Sewing Skills Series. This is something that I have wanted to provide for you guys for so long, and I'm finally able to bring it to everyone. So I have sat down and thought of the most quintessential, the most necessary skills that one needs in order to sew garments. I'm talking about all of those things that are that you'll find in your sewing patterns over and over and over again. Sometimes they're explained very well, sometimes they aren't. So I'm going to be breaking down each one of these skills and providing you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to execute the skill itself in the most perfect way. And no skill can be executed well without the perfect tool. So I'm happy to announce that Clover will be sponsoring this entire series. If you don't know of Clover, they sell uh, quilting supplies and a variety of sewing notions. They're the ones in the green and yellow packaging. I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, they sent me a bunch of tools to be able to show you guys how to perform some of the skills that we are going to cover in this series. In addition to what they sent me, they also sent extras for one of you. That's right. I've got doubles of all the tools and all the notions that I'm going to be covering or using in this series and at the end of it all I'm gonna package them all up and I'm gonna send them off to one of you in order to enter the giveaway all you need to do is leave a comment on this video or any of the videos in the series the more videos you leave comments on the more times you'll be entered to win but leaving multiple comments in one video doesn't count <laughs> one comment per video gets you one entry for up to eight entries. Got it? Today, I'm gonna kick things off with darts. So darts are something that you see in almost every single garment that you will sew, especially if it's out of a woven fabric. The purpose of a dart is to create a three-dimensional shape out of two-dimensional flat fabric and patterns uh, to give room for things like busts and shoulder blades and bums and hips and <laughs> things like that. So darts are very, very necessary in order to shape the garment and take it from a 2D pattern to a 3D garment. So let's get into this tutorial and I'll show you just how easy it is to execute beautiful darts. Okay, so there are two types of darts that you will come across in garment making. One is a dart that ends in a seam. So it can be either a bust dart that ends in the side seam. It can be a French dart that comes in really long through here. If you have a waist seam, you can have waist seam darts that come up and waist seam darts that come down into your skirt. You can even find bust darts in the arm side and in your shoulder. So all around all these different areas, you can have these types of darts that end in a seam. You can also have darts that do not end in a seam. Those are called fisheye darts and here's what they are going to look like in your line drawing. So you can see that it's just a line stops in the middle of the fabric and ends in the middle of the fabric. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do first. This is what a fisheye dart looks like on a pattern. Typically they will have different fisheye darts for different sizes. So this outer fisheye dart here is for sizes 10 and 12. The middle one is 14, 16, and the outermost one is 18, 20, and 22. And that is the one that I am going to be transferring to this, uh, to my garment today. So in order to make fisheye darts, the easiest way I think is to use tracing paper and a tracing wheel. So this is what tracing paper looks like, the packaging. Um, it comes in different size sheets and usually in a pack it will have multiple colors. And the colors are really to help you um, ensure that the, the markings that you're transferring show up on your fabric. So I have a fabric with a white background and I love to use blue tracing paper for that. 
If you have something with a dark background, you could use yellow, that stands out really well. But they also send you with green, you get this pink color, and you get white to just help you find the one that stands out on your fabric the best. So this is a brand new package of tracing paper for me. So I have literally no markings. Other ones that I've used have lines all over them from where it's been transferred. But as you can see, the paper comes in a really large sheet and I need to get the dart transferred on two sides of fabric. I need it to be on the left side and the right side. So what I like to do is to cut my tracing paper right up this fold that they already provided us with. And that's gonna give me essentially two blue sheets so that I can place one on top and one underneath and do one pass with my tracing wheel and it'll cover both sides of the fabric. So in order to do that, you wanna be very gentle. You're not trying to move your fabric around a lot. You've got it all settled down from when you um, cut it. Everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. All the notches are cut out already. So you just wanna gently lift up your fabric and slide the tracing paper underneath, ensuring that it is covering your entire fisheye dart. And if you need a little bit of assurance, just do a little peek see and make sure that it's up high enough. Mine needs to come up a little bit like so, and then lay everything back down, making sure to not have ruffled things too, too much. Obviously this is easier with more stable fabric, but you can do it with your rayons and everything else as well. Okay, so the next, you wanna take your other sheet of tracing paper and we're gonna place that one face down, right underneath the pattern, like so, and you can see it underneath and so you know any adjustments that you need to make, like so. Okay, and again, and carefully get the pattern back in its original position. Okay, great. So now at this point, I am going to take the tracing wheel and literally trace over the marking lines that are on the pattern. It's really just that simple. Okay, now that I've got that done, I like to take like the end of a pencil or something and just get these, um, uh, little circles, these little dots marked because they do help you whenever you are um, sewing the dart. So I just take the blunt end and add a little bit of pressure and it'll transfer those markings for me. And to see what this looks like, let me peel this back. You can see that the tracing wheel marked through the tracing paper and it is subtly marked onto our fabric. And then you can also see how it came off here. So as you continue to use this, more and more and more of your tracing paper will come off. So obviously you have to replace it every once in a while, but um, it does a really good job of getting the fabric marked. And I'll show you the other side as well. Now that everything is done, I can move my pattern pieces. So. Here are the markings. You see those subtle blue lines. You don't need it to be extra, you know, dark. Um, you just need it enough to be able to sew it at your machine. And so then on the other side, you can see the markings there as well. Okay, so our next move is going to be to combine the two sides of the dart. So we've got one side of legs on one side and another side of legs on the other. And we're really trying to make sure that this line that we have just made um, is even on both sides. That, you know, one side of the dart isn't this wide and the other one is super small. So in order to do that, I will first find the middle of the fisheye dart where those two, um, dots were and I think that is right here. So I'm gonna stick my pin into one leg of the dart, push it underneath the fabric and come up through the other line of the dart. So my pin is in both 
lines of the dart and then I'll just slide it back and hold it in place. So this little area of my pen is in the same place on both legs. Then I'll come out to the points and I will put a pin there. Next, find the last point right here and put a pin in that as well. Okay, so now I have the makings of a dart, but you would be surprised how much this fabric can shift in between these uh, pins. So I'll come in and similar to how I did it in the center, I will take a pin, put it through this I don't know, about every inch or so, put it through this leg and then flip the fabric over and just make sure it's coming through right on the line of the other side. And I'll do a few of those. As it gets smaller, I'll start the um, pin out here and then I'll put the tip of it through the line and just again, make sure it's coming through on the other side, like so. And then I'll do one last one. Obviously the shiftier your fabric is, the more that you will need to keep double checking and triple checking um, that your dart legs are completely lined up from one side to the other. Okay, let me finish this other one. All right, now we've got this marked. So when you get to your sewing machine, your instinct might be, I'm just gonna start here and zip, zip, but that would be incorrect because we do not want to produce any puckers at these two ends. So actually what you're going to do is start in your center, start sewing, back stitch, and then come all the way down here, sew off the edge and pull those strings. Then turn your fabric, start here, back stitch this way, and come down this way. Let me show you what that looks like. This is the other side. I did end up moving the pins to the other side so that um, they wouldn't be going underneath the presser foot. Okay, so now this is what we've got. You can see I started the stitching for both legs in the center and went out to their respective uh, tips. I just need to trim the threads and then I'm going to show you how to press. The uh, areas that are not back stitched, so these two tails on the end, you need to tie a knot just to keep that um, from unraveling. This is not going to be covered up. This is going to be um, visible from the inside. So you just want to make sure it doesn't look too, too ratty. Okay, so this is, you can see the arm side here and the neckline. So this is my center front and this is my side seam. And we want to press the fisheye dart to the center all the way down, making sure that it gets nice and tapered and flat on, like as we go down to the legs, you know, you wanna keep that seam nice and spread open. And there you have it, a fisheye dart. You can't even really see where it is, can you? It's right here. And you can see how the dart is already shaping the garment. You can already tell how it's pulling it in, creating a 3D effect to your fabric. And that's how your body, you know, how it fits to your body. We can also see how beautiful the tips are, how there's no bubble on either end. And that's because we took great care in tapering it out. Obviously you guys would use, sorry, obviously you guys would use matching thread. I wanted to use contrast thread just so you guys could see, but here's what it looks like on the inside. And you would have a matching set. This is the back, so matching set, one for each side of you. The other dart, the one that ends in the side seam, we have an example of that same pattern. Yeah, so the front, when you have the other type of dart that ends in the side seam, this is what that little number looks like on your pattern piece. And a dart that ends 
you know, where you have the widest part of it in the side seam is naturally going to create volume. And that's where your bust goes. That's where your hip goes, your bum. Um, that's what it creates space for. So, so as you can imagine, the same situation is about to happen with the tracing paper and the tracing wheel. So I'm going to slide this right side up underneath my dart. And then I'm gonna slide this one right side down underneath the pattern tissue, like so. So the tracing papers are facing each other. And just like with the fisheye dart, I am going to trace over my size, which is a 14. Like so. And then I'll also take the blunt end of a colored pencil and just make sure that we mark that point very well. And then I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm going to pull out this tracing paper. We are done with that. And I'm also going to clip into the legs. So I'm going to find that size 14 again, clip into the legs, and this is going to help me get the dart started. So I've just clipped through, just like you would on a notch or something like that, um, where those legs end. Okay, so I'm done with this. Can you guys see our beautiful dart is marked on both sides? Wham, bam. All right, and then in order to sew these darts, we are gonna turn the fabric. This is cut on the fold. This is the front of our dress. It is cut on the fold. So. Again, similar fashion that we did before, I am going to pull the um, tracing lines to each other using a pen. Can you guys see that good? Okay. So again, I am going to start the pen in the dart, one dart leg, pull it through to the other dart leg, and then mash them together. And because I snipped into the fabric, you can see one snip is there, but the other one's all the way over here. So I know I need to wiggle this down so that the snips line up with each other, and then my pen needs to still line up too. So you kind of have to do a little bit of finagling with your fingers. It's more of a feeling than anything. It's kind of hard to explain, um, but you just need to get your snips lined up and then also get that first little pin lined up on both sides as well. Then I go out to the tip just like I did with the fisheye dart. Kind of flatten that out. Put a pin there. This also kind of gives my eye a, a goal. Like I'm, I'm sewing down this line and I know where I need to stop so I know I need to keep tapering. Okay, and then I try and go somewhere in the middle, right through both uh, tracing lines, stitching lines, whatever you wanna call it, split the difference again. Again, this fabric is pretty stable, so it's being very friendly, but trust me, once you start doing this with chalet or any silky type fabric, it will not match up like you want it to. Um, um, so if you are doing those fabrics, another thing you can do is once you get it pinned a bunch, you can take it over to your iron and press along the edge here and just seal that really well. It makes it really easy for you to sew. So I'm going to do the same thing that I showed you over at the sewing machine earlier. I'm going to start here and backstitch and I'm going to taper all the way down here to nothing and then pull my thread tails and tie them off into a knot. Okay. And this is what our dart ends up looking like. Okay, I have trimmed the threads, tied them off into a knot and trimmed them. And now I can trim this as well. This as well, these are sharp. Um, okay, and then again, we're gonna go to our ironing board and we are gonna press the dart down. So away from your shoulder seam, you're gonna press this down and create a nice little crease there. And if you wanna take an extra little precaution, you can also uh, baste this just to make sure it stays nice and flat in your side seam when you go to sew those two things together. 
All right, there she is. This is our bus dart. Here's the side with no bus dart sewn. So you can already start to tell how it's creating that volume for a breast. <laughs> I mean, that's whatever, a bust, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. You can tell that it's it's already uh, manipulating the fabric and making it more of a 3D um, situation, which is the whole point of darts. So again, here are our, and I'll turn this so that you guys can see, but here are two versions of darts. We've got our fisheye dart and our dart that ends in the side seam. So easy and so beautiful and it's going to tr literally transform your garments, right? So the products I use today are the Clover Tracing Paper and the Clover Tracing Wheel with blunt edges. And the blunt edges really allow you to see the markings as they are transferred. So those are the two products I use today. I'm gonna to be keeping a running list in the description box of all of the notions and tools that I'm using throughout the series. So that if you guys want to grab any of them, you can easily click through and get what you need. So that is gonna do it for today's video. I will be back every single Thursday with a tutorial on a different skill. So be sure to check back next week when we will cover pleats, fun pleats. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.